Today we're continuing with the second introductory video to show you how to perform some things you will likely use in every album you create in Album Gen version 3, including the newly added non-printing item objects. I currently have a small uh, Great Britain Mation album uh, open I will use to add or modify for you today. In this video, I will review how to create line objects and philatelic arrows, how to create plain text objects and text on shape objects, how to create plain image objects, how to create paragraph objects, how to save objects as templates, and how to create non-printing objects. objects. On this page, we have some image objects, a paragraph object, and some text objects. On this next page, I have imported some images from EasyStamp into rectangle objects and placed them on a page in Album Gen. We'll use some of these uh, later on. One of the most commonly used objects in album pages are plain lines. With plain lines, you can adjust the thickness, the length, the rotation, and the end caps, as well as make lines dashed or dotted lines. I've already created some plain lines on the page by selecting the plain line icon, which is right here, uh, right here and left clicking on the page. Album Gen will recall the last uh, use setting for that object or you can use the default settings by clicking on default. There's also pre-supplied line types such as dashed lines, dotted lines, or a mix. They can be heavily customized to suit your every need and I urge you to explore them. I will zoom in so you can see the details. Just click on the letter Z on your keyboard and then left click to zoom in so you can see better the details. So here's a plain line, a thick plain line, a dash line with a diamond end cap. Here's a plain line with an end cap, a plain line with an arrow, a dash line, and a, da a plain line with a red arrow. To zoom out, uh, you can just uh, hit the letter Z again and hit F11 on your keyboard, which will make it fit the screen. A very useful feature is the ability to add end caps to the end of a plain line. You can add arrow, square, round, diamond, or other types of end caps. Experiment with the end caps and you can generate some very interesting shapes. I use it all the time to create philatelic arrows for my exhibit pages to highlight certain areas uh, on the, of a stamp on, on a page. With some adjustments you can have one color uh, end caps for, uh, for another uh, using the copy and paste as I'll show you here. So in other words, you can have a red arrow and a black diamond on a, nine, on a, a particular line. So let's place a plain line on a page by clicking on the plain line icon here and then move your cursor to the page, left click, and you'll be presented with a, an option that you can sh choose from the available uh, types, dash, dot, dotted, plain line, thick line. I'll choose thick line for now. And then we can choose the properties. We can choose the color. We can change it to blue, red, whatever we want. Um, you can change the thickness and then you can do the end caps. So for example, if I wanted to add a diamond end cap, I would go Actually, let's do an arrow, and then let's make the the width. Oops. So by playing around with these uh, fields here, concavity, the width, and length, you can make these arrows pretty much any shape that you like. And you can match the end cap so you have a double-ended arrow, or you can have, you know, let's say you wanted a, a, a circle on the other end. So you can, you can play around with this and generate some pretty unique, uh, pretty unique lines. Plain lines can also be rotated uh, pretty easily. What you do is you left click until you get this cursor, then hold the shift key and drag. Oops. 
Let me try that again. Shift and drag. So that's an easy way to um, move your lines and you know if you wanted to point it onto a particular area of a stamp. So if I move this object over here you can point out a particular area. It's pretty useful. I'll now show you how to create a plain text object. We left click on the T for text, move our cursor over to the page, and now we have all the properties that we want. If you want to put in your text, so let's put some sample text. When you then highlight it and you can change the size, let's say you want to make it size 14 and you want to use a different color, pick a color, click OK, click OK, and there's your text. If you want to modify the text after you've placed it, just right click on it and go to settings and then you can go to properties and adjust as you need, you know, if you want it left or center. There's there's a lot of variations here that you can do. But again, if you experiment, you'll uh, you'll figure it out. We can also add text into shape objects. We just right click on them. So I'm going to bring one onto the page here. I'm going to right click go to settings and then go to text content and you can see that we can put text above so I'm just going to put something here above and I'll put some below and the same rules apply if you want to change the size you just go ahead and choose whatever you want. You can change it to a different font. You can make it left, center, or bold. Uh, pretty much anything that you want. And then you click OK. If we zoom in, you'll see that the text has all been applied. Now let's move on and create an image object. Selecting the image icon from here, left clicking on the page, if there was already an image there, you could change it or paste from the clipboard. I'm just going to click Change. I'm going to choose a stamp. Click OK. Click OK. And there it is. There's an image. Again, many options exist, so please, exam uh, please examine them for your needs. I'll show you a couple of uh, the most commonly used ones. So if you right-click and go to Settings, and you can go to Properties, uh, for example, I could change the rotation and rotate that image 33 degrees. Click OK, and that image is now rotated. Now this is different than a shape object because it has no border. It's literally just an image. So make sure you understand the difference between a shape object and an image object. Now let's make a paragraph object. I'm going to go back to this first page here and here's our paragraph. So the way you would have done that is you clicked on P for paragraph. I'm just going to right click on this one, go to settings and properties, and again you can see that you can, uh, there's again the, the font and, and text type is pretty universal throughout the program. Um, there are different properties on how to handle the text. Uh, you can uh, have it with no adjustment, resize the frame to fit, resize text to fit. There's many, many options, including word wrapping, center justification. Uh, obviously, you can control the size, and you can add borders to them. Um, it, there's just too many things to go through, but it's uh, again, it's very standard throughout the whole program. So if you experiment with it, you'll find it has some great uses. One great feature I use all the time is the copy to file option, which saves objects so they can be reused as templates. For example, I created a tagging um, uh, object in green. Rather than recreating every time, I can save it as a template and then use it when needed. It's a huge time saver, especially for more complex items. Simply select the object, go to edit, copy to file and give it a meaningful name and then to reuse it you go to edit and paste from file. I'll show you how. So here's an object that I've created. Um, I'll, I'll select this arrow 
and then I would go to edit copy to file and give it a, a, a name so I'll call it red arrow and save it and now to recall it you would go to edit paste from file and select the one that we just selected which is red arrow and now click on the page Oops. That was a bad one because it's kind of small, hard for me to grab. I'm going to do a different one. So I'm going to go to Edit, Paste from File, and I'll choose, uh, let's do the tagging one. And there it is. So I'm going to get into these in shortly, but basically you can save any shape or object, line, anything that you want. It's really handy. I urge you to experiment with it. I'll now explain the latest tool we've added to AlbumGen. We call it the non-printable object. Why would you want a non-printable object on a page, you ask? Let me explain to you how I use it. Many times when I'm designing a page, there are stamps with not so obvious differences from other stamps. And sometimes it looks like you've placed two objects on the page and they're identical. Even if you give them a different catalog number, it still really doesn't tell you what the difference is. One of these examples is tagging or phosphorescence. It's not possible to show tagging on a printed page, but you can easily show it on the Album Gen design page. Let's use this um, Canadian um, uh, Centennial stamp, and I'm going to just move it onto the page here for a second. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this uh, better, so you can see what I'm about to do. All right, so there's our stamp. This stamp has several tagging varieties, and I like to show the phosphorescent bars so I can see what the difference is, especially if I'm missing the stamp from my collection. It kind of serves to remind me to be on the lookout for it. So what I do is create a plain line with an end cap on it, which is right here. I make the lines slightly larger than the stamp and put the lines where the tagging uh, bar should be on the stamp. So let me show you how I created this uh, uh, tagging bar. So I right click and go to settings and properties. So as you can see I made it a, a slightly greenish color with a diamond end cap and I rotated it 90 degrees. So then what I would do is I would take this and move it over onto the stamp and if we zoom in, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So you can see that my tagging line is behind uh, my stamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this stamp to the uh, uh, rear. So you right click on it and you select grouping and oops uh, order and send it back and now we have our line here and then you can move this wherever you want sometimes it's a little tricky so you can use the nudge arrows to move it over where you want let me just move this over a bit so you have to kind of play with it to decide what is best what works best for you um, if this was a single bar, I would just kind of leave it alone there. And let's zoom out. And there we are. Now I'm going to zoom back in. Now, if you were to print this page, it would print with this, um, uh, this green bar. So if we did um, a preview... you can see that this is how it would print. So I'm going to get out of there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this thing as non-printable. So what you do is you right click on it and then you go to settings, non-printing, and I'm going to make this, uh, set it as a non-printing. 
and you'll see now that it has a red X and a red X on it, which indicates to you that it's a non-printable item. So I'm going to go F11, and now if we go and do a print preview, you'll see that that green bar no longer appears. It will not print that way. I've also created uh, different uh, uh, tagging bars. So you can, I, I have a, I'll call them a repertoire where I've saved them all and then you can, you know, you can use them to add them on your stamps, different colors for different uses. But uh, there's many things that you can do with them. Again, experiment and uh, I think you'll be happy with the results. We'll be working hard to create part three of just basics, uh, just the basics for album gen three. It should be coming soon. I hope you enjoy.